as usual, follow us on all our social media stuff, uh, three down dev on Twitter uh, at three down development on both Instagram and TikTok. Um, and obviously if you haven't yet, please subscribe helps us out a ton. So what is the three safety defense? And I'm going to go through a brief slideshow here um, with some graphics that I think help outline some of the non-traditional aspects um, of, of the, the system. Um, and, and then we're going to get to some film and some cutups. One of the big things is there are aspects of this defense that are fundamentally different from traditional defense. You think of traditional defense, you think of edge rushers. Um, you know, usually you're thinking of either single high or, or two high players. And really that's what you're going to get to out of the three high or the three safety look consistently. You're just not going to necessarily show it as much pre-snap. Um, you know, you think about having, whether it's three down or four down, you're still going to usually have those two edge rushers trying to force the ball back inside, you know, to your linebackers here really. And, and through the use of the tight front uh, and the back front, uh, which are kind of derivatives we'll get into, you know, you're really trying to knock the ball off the table. And the big thing that jumps out to you is you look at this and go, wow, the team's going to be able to run the football, right? You look at this picture and I know the offensive coordinator and everybody's going, I think I can run the ball into that look. Um, and Certainly, you know, this is a defense that while it's been adapted, you know, to defend a variety of formations. And I think as a base system, it can be run against any, you know, type of opponent. It certainly stems from defending the spread, right? You're going to see pictures like this in the Big 12 uh, a lot. You're going to see two by two, three by one. Um, you know, even when there's a tight end on the field, you know, it's usually that tight end is a pretty dynamic athlete. Uh, you know, not to say that they're not good blockers, but they're at least very capable pass catchers. Um, and with quarterbacks not only having the ability to run more uh, option routes, RPOs, um, the traditional model of defense gets strained, right? I think we've, we've seen that at every level. Um, so this is something that really caught my attention is, hey, this is a way to kind of, you know, attack the spread. Um, and, and especially the spread zone run game. And that's what we're going to get into. So just in terms of some, some base, you know, housekeeping here, uh, we'll refer to the two uh, corners as just that, the corners. You'll have your field and your boundary safety, which are your two deep players here that are about 10 yards off the ball. Uh, you'll have your field and your boundary linebacker uh, and then your middle linebacker. Uh, and then you'll have your third safety. Usually this guy gets a fancy name depending on what team you study. Uh, I called him the star in this particular study for me. Uh, so we'll refer to him as the star. I know sometimes the star has a connotation as being the nickel. Um, so, but in this, in this defense, you know, this is really your nickel defender, your third safety, um, your, your 50 B and a four, two, five personnel. And what was interesting to me is I looked at this as an offensive coach and said, you know, I want to be able to attack space or numbers. And this front gives you the, or this system, I should say, gives you the opportunity to change how you defend different looks, be fluid and force the ball to go to places where you already have tacklers. That's really the basics of, of typical defense, right? The four down front, you're looking at your two edge rushers, bringing the ball back to your inside linebackers, right? If the ball tries to go to the perimeter, here's the opposite here. We're going to knock the ball off the table to where our linebackers are in those overhang positions. And then that allows them to play, and we'll get into defending RPOs and all that. That allows them to play pass first, run second, and still have a chance to be effective run defenders. Um, so that that's kind of what drew me to the front, uh, and that's what we'll call these players here as we go through it. So in terms of the defensive line, um, and there's lots more that can be done, obviously, out of this system. Anytime you're, you know, you're looking at a clinic, and you know you're watching, um, you're watching, you know, an hour's worth of stuff. You're not going to get absolutely everything that goes into, you know, making that that defense what it is. There's a lot more you can do and change. And this is not a, you know, I, I'm not claiming to be a GA at Iowa State. You know, I'm sure there's a lot more people that could give you more context there. Uh, but this was just from my film study, the notes that I thought would be really beneficial for coaches. So in terms of the defensive line, uh, I just called the one end our anchor, the other end our defensive end, and then you have your nose. Usually you're going to be in some derivative of the tight front. Now they spend a lot of time uh, in what I've heard called a back front, which just means you're going to have a four eye to the side of the back. Some teams it'll be a three, some teams it'll be a four eye. Um, you know, that that's kind of up to preference. And we'll talk when we talk about defending different run schemes, why the difference uh, for some, 
And then you're going to have what's called a heavy five technique away from the back. Now, this is probably the most critical position on the, uh, on the, on the defensive line, at least to me, um, because you need that heavy five to generate a pass rush. Um, so that's the only player you're going to have in this front. Uh, and this is the first, the, one of the first things coaches say to me is, well, how are you going to get a pass rush out of that? We'll talk a little bit about it. Um, but being able to have a five technique rush the edge is valuable. Uh, but what we mean by heavy is against any sort of run. So if we get, you know, a base block here from the tackle, this anchor end is going to go inside of it. So end up playing the B gap. It ends up playing like the tight front. In my mind, I conceptualize it like the tight front um, because that's ultimately what it becomes against, uh, against run schemes. Um, your nose, and we'll get to this in a second, is going to play what's called a lag technique, meaning that if the center steps this way, the nose will play straight ahead, putting him in the backside A. Okay, If the center steps this way, the nose is going to go straight ahead, putting him in the backside A. The nose is going to end up in the A gap uh, to the side of the back or away from the side of the run, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, and, and you could have them read the center. I know a lot of coaches will just have them slant to the side of the back uh, if the back is in the offset, simpler, a little bit simpler than having your, your player read it. Um, but that the mic is going to play off of that. So if the nose is slanted to the back, the mic will have the opposite A. If the nose is lagging, the mic will read which gap the nose plays and he'll have the opposite gap. And again, the nose should end up, if we got zone strong towards the anchor here, the nose should end up in the weak A. Mike should end up in the strong A. Our anchor should uh, play heavy or uh, like the Saban tree calls it Jimmy pony um, where they're going to play the C gap on pass, but, but play inside against the run. Uh, and obviously the four eye on the backside can't get reached by the tackle playing through the B gap, whether it's a three technique or four eye uh, that stays the same. Uh, so that's the base defensive front. And we'll show a couple examples of, of, you know, the tight front versus the back front, really it all plays the same. Um, the only advantage to the back front is you get the one five technique uh, and that allows you to, you know, have one edge rusher that's immediately in the C gap uh, on pass. Um, so here's the base structure against two by two. Uh, and, and one of the things I think that really drew me to this was your ability to disguise coverages uh, and disguise pressures and, and different things. If you look at this here, right? Obviously, you know, you have your three linebackers, you could blitz any combination of them, but having that three safety look really allows you to rotate coverage later, right? Cause you have that safety, you know, really it's middle of the field closed and middle of the field open, right? Pre-snap. So you're able to do a lot of things with that star um, depending on the athlete you have there. And depending on the team you're playing, you know, you have a tremendous amount of options, which is again, I think really valuable uh, as a structure. Um, we're going to talk mostly the base structure stuff today and maybe get into some pressures near the end. Um, but in terms of coverage, you can play any of your kind of base, middle of the field, open coverages, quarters, palms, uh, two read, just straight cover two. Um, all of that stuff is available. You can play man match, zone match, uh, because you have those three on two triangles, right? We have our, our field and boundary backer, um, that are able to be the low wall in the triangles. You have your corner who's able to kind of play that, uh, you know, whether it's cut cut coverage where they're going to carry the one vertically, um, you know, or, or like a mod quarters, you know, man on demand or man on deep on that number one. And then you have your safety capping those two overhangs so your linebacker doesn't have to play the vertical of two. So, again, you could get into any coverage there, and there's a lot of great clinics on YouTube, um, you know, on those different types of coverages. But basically – you know, you have your triangle here. Uh, you can play any of those those three on two coverages. You could play bracket. You you could do a lot of different things. You're three on two. You're in a great position. Um, the key thing here is these these next two players, and this is what I'll spend most of my time on, um, is your mic is your fourth rusher. So if you were in like a four two five personnel, your mic really could be your like lighter defensive end, right? Your your pass rusher. Um, you know, your, your tweener somewhere between a linebacker and a defensive end uh, could also be, you know, a, a, just a linebacker that, that has some pass rush ability or, or is just a good athlete finisher in space. Um, if you were in four two five personnel, that, that would be that player. Um, it's, it can be a true mic, but there's definitely some advantages to having a, a pass rusher there because typically that player is going to be the fourth rusher. So what we mean by that is really they have the quarterback. 
Um, this is the first, like I, I mentioned before, the first thing people say to me, offensive coaches, uh, you know, say to me and Braden chime in at any point here, um, you know, with, with your thoughts as an offensive coach, but the first thing that people say is how are you going to generate a pass rush and how are you going to contain the quarterback? And a big part of what I was looking at different teams do things different ways. Um, obviously if you want to play drop eight, you know, you, you are, you're only going to be rushing three. So you got to find a way to, to get after the passer that way. Um, but I was a little skeptical when I first started learning about this is, Oh, the mic has the quarterback. And I thought, well, if that's, you know, your best, one of your best finishers, you know, what a great way to let that player be where they need to be. Right. I can't think of how many times I've played a mobile quarterback and my rush end wins the rep, but the quarterback escapes up into the pocket or escapes out the other side. Um, this puts that player in a position to play the quarterback anywhere they go. And again, you can play drop eight and, and stunt the front and do different things to try and contain the quarterback. Um, but that fourth rusher basically gives your D line freedom. And one of the things that Iowa state does is they stunt all over the place. They'll run every stunt in the book um, up front just to try and collapse the pocket and force the quarterback out uh, or force the quarterback up knowing that they have that second wave rusher uh, who's there to play the quarterback. And it was one, originally it was one of my biggest concerns about the, about the defense. Um, and it's really become one of my favorite things about it is how efficiently uh, you're able to, to stay with mobile quarterbacks. Um, you know, obviously you have to have the right body there uh, and that's something maybe on second and long or third and long, um, you know, you're able to get an even more athletic player in there if you're, if you're playing a, a really athletic quarterback. Um, but it's definitely something, uh, you know, that, that allows you some flexibility as the defensive play caller. Um, and the second piece is the running back in two by two is the responsibility of the star linebacker uh, and, or the star safety. And as running backs become more a part of the passing game, you know, that's something offensive coaches I know are always looking to pick on is get the running back out, right? Get, get the running back involved in the pass route, whether it's going empty pre-snap, check release, or, or running a release out of the backfield. You know, I, I can't think of how many times, you know, we've said Braden and, and stuff we've done together, where it's, hey, if we get the running back on the mic, we're going to love that matchup. Um, and, and now it's not the mic, it's, it's your nickel defender, you know, is responsible for that back. And I just think it, a, if, if you're playing any sort of man to man, it's great. But also when you're playing zone, um, if you need to push and we'll talk about that, say we get the back, if the back were to release. So if we were to get, uh, if we were to get a push, this is the beauty of live television. If we were to get a push here, uh, with the back releasing, and then an in route, you know, typically it'd be your Mike linebacker that might now have to relate to this dig route. Um, whereas if your uh, if your star is playing this position, now you can push to the flat defender or the flat defender to that running back and have the star um, take that dig route. Um, you know, which is which can be a really effective you know way to handle the running back getting out. So in terms of base responsibilities, that's what we're looking at. So if you're this quarterback here, right, here's our fourth rusher. So you can see this really looks like a traditional, you know, four, four player rush. I like, cause you can kind of see that second wave, right? You have your initial rush and then you have the, this big gap opening up here. I'm not sure what stunt they would have ran um, to, uh, to open this up. And then the mic is able to, to plug that gap that gets created. The running back stays in here. So the star you can see has kind of come down. If, if this back releases, uh, you know, that's that's the star's responsibility. Um, but you can kind of clearly see that role of your traditional mic backer in coverage, that middle of the field coverage player. And then you can see the split field coverage here. They're playing three on two and three on two. I don't know about you, Braden, but from a quarterback standpoint, there's not a lot of space or leverage to be had here. No, no, that's, a, you know, if, if I'm looking at from a quarterback's perspective, I'm, my numbers aren't great. The middle of the field's really taken away by that uh, by the star player, so it's uh, you know this really makes you really have to do a great job of of teaching pictures here from from the quarterback's perspective because it really uh, changes a lot of things from a traditional sense. Absolutely, and this isn't even like a lot of people will run drop eight out of it if they're really worried about the passing game, um, which you can do. I'm not going to cover it a ton. Um, you know, because I think a lot of defensive coaches want to be rushing more than three guys. 
consistently, but it's something you can do. But you just see here how two by two, you know, in the past game, whatever your coverage rules are, again, whether you're playing man match, whether you're playing palms, whether you're playing, you know, old school quarters, if you're three on two, you're going to have good leverage. So that's kind of the picture you're looking for in, in two on two, right? You have your, your, your fourth rusher clogging up the, the hole that opens up. You have your star on the back and your three on two across the board. Now in terms of run fits, um, you see there the little color coded here. Your heavy five is going to play the B gap away from the back. Again, that's only if it gets a down or if it gets a base block uh, or a reach block or a down block, he can chase the dive. He is B gap responsible in the run game. Um, your, your backer away from the back is going to play the C gap from depth. Okay. So he, that's, you know, one of, one of the kind of hot spots in the defense um, is you're going to have to play that C gap from depth, but we'll show some film of, of being able to do it really effectively against good teams. And I've seen lots of high school film. Um, you know, there's lots of other good clinics on YouTube here on the same topic with, with high school film of guys doing it at a high level. And you can play with the width you want your player to have, right? So if you're not getting full field RPOs, you don't necessarily need to be this wide. Um, the other thing is you can get the back. Um, you can get the backer to the side of the back totally out of the fit if you want. So the star does not have a gap in, in 10 personnel. So what you can do is if you don't want your boundary backer responsible for the quarterback, cause you're so worried about the say it's zone read RPO or glance RPO. If you, if you want uh, that player totally out of the fit, then you can have your star become the quarterback player. So basically you're going to get, if you were to get, you know, say we got zone and we'll watch this actual clip in a few minutes, but if you get zone action this way, you can be three on two and, and play the RPO with those three. And then the star can become the quarterback player. The star can drop down and become that sixth fitter, um, which allows that that backer that's in conflict, you know, to, uh, to remain out of conflict and out of the fit. So this is just what it looks like from the end zone cut. So again, if, if we get, uh, if we get the back here is to the opposite side. So the boundary backers out of the fit, the star is going to play the C gap. Uh, and ultimately have a quarterback to cut back. You're going to lag the center heavy five away from uh, from the back, and then the backer away is in the fit from depth. 